the Horatio Nelson must rank as one of the most thrilling and heroic figures of English history. Uh, and ever since I started as a dealer uh, specialising in portraiture, one of the subjects that I've always sought, one of those paintings that always excites people, never fails to get you going, is a portrait of Nelson. But what makes this portrait so distinct from so many others, not just Nelson's, but historical portraits generally, is the veracity, is the truth, is the searing realism that is displayed in this face. I'm so used to seeing portraits in which the face has been smoothed, has been idealised, has given the appearance, uh, to all intents and purposes, uh, you know, that, that, that the person is a sort of pure sprung individual who's just come out of the bath. But this is so different. Not only is the expression uh, haunting, unsettling, there's almost a, a, a whiff of, of, of fatality about it, but the face itself shows the, 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 the happenings of the previous years. His forehead with that searingly painful looking scar tissue, that wound that was so bad when it was inflicted by a piece of metal at the Nile that people thought he was dead. His forehead hung over his face. The skin was, was, was loosened from the bone. One of the most interesting aspects of this is the eyebrow, which may have been shaved off uh, in order to facilitate uh, a part of the operation, may well indeed have been lost. It, it, it might just be uh, scar tissue that um, uh, has meant that the eyebrow no longer grows. But I don't think I've ever seen a formal portrait of the 18th century in which uh, the, the idiosyncrasies of the face are shown with such unsettling realism as this. of this picture is as epic as it gets. It was discovered in Italy in the 19th century, rolled up the identity of the subject as Horatio Nelson lost. It was then bought by a dealer who brought it over to England. The National Portrait Gallery did a drawing of it. The picture was then sold to Alfred Morrison, a leading collector of the period who owned the correspondence between Emma Hamilton and Horatio Nelson. After that, we're not sure how this happened. It ended up in America and there, it was overpainted. Someone thinking that the eyebrow that you can see here so clearly as, 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 as broken and damaged was something to do with the history of the painting. It might have been knocked or scraped or overcleaned. Then painted over the eyebrow, he completed it. He did effectively plastic surgery. And what happened was the identity of this painting as the famous lost work was thus lost. And one of the most exciting moments of, of my recent art dealing career was watching bit by bit as the solvent bit into the later paint and removed these cosmetic additions. To reveal beneath the wounded eyebrow the signature of this Nelson portrait of the battle-worn hero. We don't know much about Guzzardi as a portrait painter, but clearly he was not someone who was loaded with the expectation of producing a, a, a formal hierarchical heroic head uh, as many artists in England would have been if they were painting Nelson. He came to the subject afresh, um, uh, unconditioned uh, by the expectations of, of naval portraiture and, and, and indeed just historical personage portraiture. And so, perhaps because of his tradition, because of a, a, a different approach, he has shown him as he is. And I can't tell you how unusual that is in the 18th century. What is so striking, what is so unsettling, is that we actually see the haunted reality of the battle-worn man whose end was in sight.